The Walt Disney Company's polling with the American public is crashing. Absolutely crashing. And the media is finally having to report on it. At the same time, though, the media is being very careful not to report the full, the full picture of how bad it is. Are you shocked? Are you surprised? Guess what else probably will not shock or surprise you? I'm about to explain it all. And folks, we are here explaining entertainment, keeping you ahead of the culture curve. It's what we do each and every day here on the WDW Pro channel. If you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and that notification bell. When you click it, you stick it to the algorithms. Some videos I am looking forward to more than others. This is one of those. This is a video that you can share with your normie friends if you're trying to explain to them what's going on with Walt Disney Company. And don't be too frustrated with people who don't get it. The media often does not fully relay what is happening, what has happened since about 2016, 2017. So today we're going to explain it. There's a new poll out, straight up out of Axios Harris. This is a poll that's been going on for years. And just, just luckily, perhaps, we've been keeping the receipts on all of those polls for years. All right, let's get into it. Uh, out of WDWMagic.com, a website that I like, run by a person that I like, uh, so kudos to him. Disney's reputation is being negatively impacted by the dispute with Ron DeSantis, according to new Axios Harris poll. Now note that the information that's in here is going to be delivered to us straight from uh, the press release that was given by that poll, by that polling company, but it does not paint the full picture, and we'll get into that in just a moment. This website says the Walt Disney Company's ongoing dispute with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is having a negative impact on its reputation, according to the latest poll from Axios Harris. Now, let me qualify that that's part of it, but it's definitely not all of it. And the poll actually does not say what is the cause for this drop. It is simply noting that the drop is happening. And I think that the media and the press release that comes from the company from which this article is using information, I think that it's all being very careful not to paint more broadly and say that Disney has a more systemic problem, a political problem that goes far beyond DeSantis. It does, by the way. The Walt Disney Company is currently ranked at number 77. By the way, that's out of 100. The 100 biggest uh, companies in this, in this uh, polling, Disney's now at 77. A decrease of 12 positions from its 2016 ranking. That's true, but get ready. Uh, we're going to show you how that's not even close to the full-on truth of it. As you would expect, Disney's reputation has shifted in alignment with the respondent's political affiliation. The company's reputation has risen among Democrats and fallen among Republicans, but the change was greater among Republicans, driving the overall decrease in reputation. Notably, the Walt Disney Company now ranks as the fifth most polarizing brand. Again, folks, out of the top 100 companies, Disney is now the fifth most polarizing, measured by the gap between Republican and Democratic respondents. This puts Disney among the Trump Organization, Fox, Hobby Lobby, Twitter, and Facebook in the list of the 10 most politically polarized companies. All right, now let's head over to the actual Axios press release on this. Uh, this May 23rd, 2023. So yesterday, Disney's reputation hit by polarizing political drama. You can see the chart here. You can also see that uh, 2016 was not where we uh, heard in that prior article, although I do not believe that was intentional in the least. Disney's, uh, Disney's ratings have been dropping significantly. Um, all the way up from 2017, which is what we talked about. 2017 was really the high mark, and then things began to drop, and they've been steadily decreasing. So to say that um, that it's dropped such and such points from 2016 is sort of, well, it's not the best measure considering it was higher in 2017. This has started this slope downward. The Walt Disney Company took a big hit in this year's Axios Harris Poll 100, dropping a dozen spots to 77th after Tangling. And by the way, that's where they got that. How How... WW Magic thought that that was from 2016 versus the prior year. I'm, I'm not sure. Anyway, it's no biggie. Um, after tangling with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis over students' LGBTQ plus rights. Now, again, folks, uh, that's how this is being framed. But there's no information to say that this is just about DeSantis. It's how it's being framed, even in this press release. So we can't, we can't be negative about WDW Magic just carrying what is being given to them by the company. We'll, we'll dive into what the company actually says more in just a moment. Why it matters in voicing opposition to DeSantis' so-called 
uh, we're not even going to say it, Disney gained favor with Democrats, but took such a large reputation hit with Republicans that its overall reputation score was severely impacted. Now, the key thing to take away from this, though, is that there's a missing, there's a missing statistic that we need that we don't have from Axios, and that is we don't know what's going on with moderates. That's what we really need. And it looks to me that with the company dropping all this way down, uh, this far down, and, and by the way, accelerating, look at this, accelerating downward, it's not a slow slope down. Um, we want to know what's going on with moderates. We don't have that. So the respondents were asked how they felt about Disney com uh, now compared with a year ago. 44% of de Democrats, but only 21% of Republicans said they were feeling more positive about the company. Again, we don't know about the independents. We don't know about the moderates. And that's what's what's making this less beneficial to us. Um, here's, what, here's what's said by uh, the Harris Poll CEO, John Gersima. I assume that's how we say that. The lesson here is that when you divide, you subtract. When you divide audiences, you ultimately, you're ultimately going to be subtracting customers for your business. Unlike brands like Patagonia or Chick-fil-A that already are identified with ideological or policy views, Disney didn't have a track record for speaking out on this issue. That's right. Disney was seen as a unifying force, a common denominator throughout the culture. It was not political. It was not conservative. It was not liberal. It was children's family entertainment, which now puts Disney just behind FTX, if you can believe it. If you want to know how bad this is, if you want to know how bad the situation is, FTX is the next company above Disney. If Disney drops farther, they will actually be more divisive than FTX. We don't even need to go into why that company is so divisive. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, let's continue on. Because here's the interesting thing. Should we to just stop there, that would be enough, right? People say, oh, poor Disney. But it is not even close to the full picture. And in order to get the full picture, we need to go to a little website that I work on called thatparkplace.com. It's in every single video we do here. This goes back uh, to 2022. Axios Harris poll shows Disney popularity plunging since 2019. And it's going to give us more information that's important to note. Here we go. The Walt Disney Company was previously only beat by five total corporations for the most positively perceived company out there in many of their categories. Let's say that again, because this is missing. This is context that is completely missing from all the other political reports out there. You will get this nowhere else until now, and then perhaps it will be disseminated to others that are interested in telling the full truth, nothing but the truth. So help them God. The Walt Disney Company was previously only beat by five total corporations for the most positively perceived company out there in many of their categories. Out of the 100 biggest global corporations, they were number 37 overall last year. And in the top, in the top 10, three years ago, that means in 2019, the Walt Disney Company was in the top 10. Top 10, folks. They were in number 65 in 2022. Now in 2023, they're in the 70s. Trust, ethics, citizenship, and culture are the statistics which polled citizens selected as the least positive qualities of the Walt Disney Company. Let's, let's go there again. Let's say it again. Trust, ethics, citizenship, and culture. Those are now ranked as the least positive qualities of the Walt Disney Company. And back from this article, Disney in 2022 was best judged uh, or compared to electronic arts in terms of dislike amongst the public. That is now getting worse. Make sure to catch The Pro Show Thursdays 5 to 7 Eastern Time. Entertainment Explained, The Culture Curve Conquered, live with Pro and all his friends. So now let's go to the actual poll. This is kind of hard to find, but we've got to do it in order to, for you all to see what's really going on here. This is the Harris poll. This is what we're talking about, except this time we're actually going to the real thing, not just reading articles, not just seeing how the media frames it. 2023 corporate reputation rankings. Now, here's the interesting thing about this. You may hear that, for example, Chick-fil-A is a divisive company, right? Chick-fil-A was owned by a devout Christian, still maintains those devout Christian standards. And yet Chick-fil-A is still the fifth highest ranked uh, company in terms of appreciation, in terms of the public's reception of it. It may be divisive, but that doesn't matter. All that means is, is that there is a small contingent of people who really, really dislike Chick-fil-A. But overall, people like Chick-fil-A. It's just that there's a contingency that really dislikes it. 
a lot. And that puts it in a divisive place. Now, if we want to take a look, oh, we scrolled too far. I see we've got this uh, right here. Um, if we want to look at a company that's actually com comparable to what Disney is going through, and we'll get to Disney in just a moment, the company that we can look at that's comparable is Tesla. Now, the reason that Tesla is comparable, you can see it's dropped 50 spots over time. Tesla, what is happening is it, it's in the opposite direction. So Disney has made, we assume, I mean, there's no way that Disney could be dropping the way it is without moderates also leaving, independents, moderates, and, and conservatives, Republicans. Disney's dropping all of those. Tesla is dropping individuals who are most liberal. And the thing is that those individuals tended to buy a lot of Teslas or be supporters of Teslas. That's dropped it significantly. It's dropped 50 spots. That's amazing. From being a top 20 company to number 62. Now, the thing about Tesla, though, is that despite the fact that liberals are leaving Tesla, it's not mattering. Now, why does it not matter? You know, we want to be fair here. Well, it doesn't matter because the Tesla Model Y is still the highest selling vehicle in the state of California, which, by the way, is one of the most liberal states in the country. And so companies are able to do this. They can actually be a divisive company. They can drop spots on here if the product is so good that consumers can't ignore it. The consumers in California, they may hate Elon Musk. They may despise his uh, new desire to speak out and, and be a, a, a vocal spokesperson for free speech and other things. But that doesn't mean that they're, they're ceasing to buy the product. It's the number one selling car in California and in other states as well. And that's simply because the Tesla vehicles are of a higher quality as judged by the market. You be the judge. I don't care if you can like Teslas or not. You can say, oh, no, I like this car company. I don't care. The market, though, the market says that they're of a superior quality. Otherwise, people would not buy them. And uh, that's especially true when people are buying uh, Teslas in spite of the, their dislike of the owner. They're separating that out. Yet the, uh, the view of Tesla has dropped. Now, why do I go into that kind of detail about Tesla? Well, we have to do that because we need to understand what's going on with Disney. Disney over time has made that sort of a drop. Uh, year to year, they're only down 12, but they have, they have dropped significantly. As we said, they were number five, number five on the list uh, at one point just years ago. Now they're down to number 77 and dropping. Now, the reason that matters for Disney is because Disney is not providing services that are far superior. And again, that's not for me to judge. That's not for you to judge. That's what the market says. That's what we're paying attention to. That's what this channel is all about, is relaying that hard information to you. The market, uh, by virtue of the fact that, that the box office is dropping, by virtue of the fact that the stock is dropping, by virtue of the fact that subscribers are down in North America for Disney+, Plus, by virtue of the fact that they are forecasting now that this quarter and the next quarter are likely to be lower for Disney parks in terms of attendance and revenues, the market is saying, that Disney is no longer providing the superior pro uh, product. People are going to other companies for that. People are going to watch Mario. They're going to watch Mario instead of watching Elemental, let's say. Um, people are going to be going to watch superhero films from other companies when they go watch Ant-Man Quantumania and say, I've had enough of that. Indiana Jones, same kind of thing. Uh, people are going to go watch Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. That's what's happening here. The company not only became extremely divisive, which dropped them down to a 70 Point 0.9 uh, rating, but at the same time, they failed to deliver superior products. And so that is really uh, a two-pronged uh, just collapse in the company completely and utterly. And so they've taken a company that was number five, dropped it all this, this way down, while at the same time diluting that which they are supposed to provide. Now, you know, we can argue all day about whether or not that's right or wrong or whether Disney is being unfairly treated or whatever. But, you know, take Chick-fil-A, for example. Chick-fil-A, divisive right? I guess there's a small contingency out there that hates them, but they make the darn best chicken sandwiches that you can find. And so doesn't matter. You know, we could go through a bunch of these that uh, maybe we don't like, but you know, Disney is now down there with Fox. They're down with the Trump organization. They're down there uh, with Target, I suppose is also catching up with them now. Uh, other companies that are going through some of these similar things. And by the way, folks, we're not here to give you financial advice. That's not what I'm here for. Please do not take anything I'm telling you to be financial advice. If you need financial advice, go seek out a financial advisor who is certified, qualified, and everything else that's necessary. But uh, in saying that, I do want to bring this to your attention because this is what people don't understand. If we look here at the five-year stock value of the Walt Disney Company, 
what we can see here is that back on March 20th of 2020, that's when the market really, you know, that's when the, the crashing down happened, right? From February 21st until March 3rd, or March 20th, nobody knew what was going to happen because of the, the massive pandemic and what was happening. And so stocks everywhere crashed. And so Disney dropped all the way down to $85.98, right, right at $86. Well, take a look at this now. It's dropping again, dropping again and uh, flirting with that number. But there's no, there's no stock crash anymore. There's no collapse. There's no worldwide pandemic to blame it on. It's just Disney. And the result of that, the result of it dropping down to this level now, is that you're going to see people lose confidence in Robert Iger and the rest of leadership at Disney. If it goes anywhere close to where the market crashed to with the, the pandemic, and there is no pandemic, there's just incompetence. Well, we're in for a wild ride in what could happen with the company. At that point, perhaps you would even see the, uh, the institutional investors begin to take action. Who knows? Perhaps uh, Nelson Peltz, the Tryon Group, et cetera, would be ready to do something. Uh, we're reaching out. We'll let you know what we hear. But folks, that's what's going on. The Disney company made the, de the decision to become divisive, and now they're suffering the consequences of that. That's where we are. That's as simple as I can make it for all of you. And as bad as some of these articles are pointing out that, you know, it's all about DeSantis, et cetera. Now, this is a trend that has went way back, way back. I mean, let's just look at this one more time. DeSantis wasn't an issue for Disney in 2018, in 2019, in 2020, in 2021, or in 2022. It is now an issue in 2023. But this slide began far earlier. And it's going to continue until Disney decides to hop off the division train. Hopefully they do before they drop too far. Hopefully they can get things turned around, but it will take a complete and total tonal shift and a recognition that they have been on the wrong path. Folks, if you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and you can stick it to the algorithms when you click it. We're talking about that notification bell. Drop a comment down below. Tell me what you're thinking. I read them. I respond. I love your comments. This should not be just a monologue, but it's a conversation with you. The Pro Show Live is coming out Thursday, 5 to 7 Eastern Time. That's in the evenings, of course. Every Thursday, we're having fun with me and a panel of all my friends. Make sure that you join in and have fun with us. And folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep learning. Keep growing and keep having fun. Say it ain't so. This just in. Disney lost money on another movie. Why, that can't be. I thought that John Lasseter fella over at Pixar was cranking out the latest hits and Marvel was unstoppable and Disney princesses were a thing and Star Wars was a multi-billion dollar money-making franchise. I overheard you talking about Disney and wanted to let you know you're really behind the ball. If you are uh, getting great articles from thatparkplace.com and subscribe to WDW Pro's YouTube channel, you'd actually be ahead of the culture curve and have entertainment explained. <laughs>